Good morning on a spectacular 25th Sunday in Pentecost. Our opening hymn is hymn 551. This morning we begin on page 323 in the prayer book, page 323. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith: Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who has caused, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon the people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. 
Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together portions of Psalm 90, found in your leaflet by the half verse. Lord, you have been our refuge. From one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born. From age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. Suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you. Their secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts to wisdom. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn before the gospel is hymn 541, verses 1, 2, and 5.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed, so I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance, but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless servant, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. After a long time, the master came and settled accounts. The master came and settled accounts. I'm going to start out with something that will seem off the subject, but after 9-11, a bipartisan commission was appointed to investigate 9-11. And it started with a mandate that said that whatever conclusions the commission came to must be unanimously agreed to. That's what they started with. And the blue ribbon panel then spent many months going through all sorts of evidence and doing a host of investigations and at the end of it all, the commission published its findings in a big report. Given the gravity of the situation, 9-11 for heaven's sake, the report's reception was surprisingly muted. I know of one victim's widow who was disheartened. Basically, the commission found that 9-11 was a systems failure 
And its recommendations were that boxes get moved around on the organization chart and that a new department be created, which was no doubt all good. But predictably, given its starting mandate, that everything had to be agreed to unanimously, the report was strikingly anodyne and bloodless. No assignment of responsibility or blame. It all just kind of happened. There was no accountability. And then we had the war in Iraq and the Wall Street crisis. And after each of these catastrophic events, with their incalculable costs in lives and treasure, no one was held responsible. On the contrary, the people who brought us these disasters got to write and sell self-exculpating books and do TV interviews that redirected the blame elsewhere. My favorite was the, the Wall Street crisis was because home buyers borrowed too much. So, lack of accountability is a particular 21st century feature. Occasionally, someone pays a price. We remember that Al Franken was forced to resign as a US senator for a misdeed that no one can recall. And boosting a liquor store or stealing a car will still land you in jail. But above that level, accountability, generally, has been banished as a thing. I watched it happen over and over again in business in the 21st century when consequence-free management reached its full flower in executive stock options and pre-negotiated severance packages. Heads I win and there is no tails. Enough of that. Except to say the death of accountability makes this morning's readings sound almost strange, quaint, naive. Why? Because they all point us to a day of judgment. Say, what? What are you even talking about with your day of judgment? They point to the truth of accountability. Whatever our modern vanities and deceptions may be, the Judeo-Christian tradition includes a time of judgment. Zephaniah was a prophet operating in the 7th century BC, and he proclaimed the approaching day of divine judgment, which he saw coming as a payback, a consequence of Judah's sins. Judgment day was a message that was really kind of um, advanced by Amos and Isaiah, and then it got to Zephaniah, who passed it on to Jeremiah. In today's reading, Zephaniah proclaims, quote, For the day of the Lord is at hand. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. 
The great day of the Lord is near. Zephaniah then lists the wrath, distress, and anguish, ruin, and devastation, darkness, and gloom to come on that day. It gets really dark when he talks about blood poured out like dust and flesh like dung. The whole earth consumed in fire, a terrible end to all the inhabitants of earth. Goodness. Speaking of the whole earth being consumed in fire and a terrible end to all the inhabitants, that is either just idle talk from 2,700 years ago or maybe prophetic. In First Thessalonians, Paul writes, quote, The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So then let us keep awake and be sober and put on the breastplate of, uh, breastplate of faith and love. It's going to come like a thief in the night. Finally, we come to Matthew's gospel and the parable of the talents. It is also all about judgment. I prefer the Revised Standard Version translation, which uses servants instead of slaves. I meant to look up why the, the new Revised Standard Version is so conscientious about talking about slaves, but I, I didn't do it. Anyway, I prefer servants. A man entrusted his property to three servants and went away. And after a long time, the master came and settled accounts. To the servants who made more of what the master entrusted to them, he says, well done. Good and trustworthy servant, enter into the joy of your master. We heard an echo of this parable in the hymn we just sang. Quote, and a glad sound comes with the setting sun. Servants, well done. That's one of the few, this is really off the subject, but that's one of the few hymns in our hymnal where the lyrics are written by a woman to the third servant, who was afraid of losing, losing his uh, talent, and who buried his talent in the ground, and then he returned it intact, the master said, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Luke's gospel also says the master will return and demand an accounting. Luke chapter 12, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. And every Sunday we say he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. One writer says, we stand under incalculable responsibility. The parable of the talents, um, which has experienced grotesque misinterpretation, according to me, by preachers and laymen, to whom, to those who have a lot more will be given, and so, oh my goodness. Anyway, the parable of the talents tells us what we will be judged on. 
tells us what we will be judged on. Notice, our Lord says nothing about the third servant being bad. There's no badness in this parable. So far as we know, that third servant was sinless. He didn't do this and that and the other thing, so, so far as we know. In other words, we get little or no credit with Jesus for not being wicked. Let's all try not to be wicked, but that doesn't, that doesn't even get you an incomplete is to just not be wicked. Here we have the third servant doomed to outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth for doing nothing wrong. Why? The answer is, as he told the master, I was afraid. I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. The third servant was afraid. He was afraid to take risks with his love. The master had entrusted him with the responsibility to love, and he missed the opportunity. He misunderstood what was required of him. He had been greatly loved, and he needed to multiply that love. Not take care of it and then give it back, but multiply it. We will be judged on how much we risk. The first two servants risked, and they entered into joy. The third servant was afraid, didn't take any risks, and so he gets to go and weep and gnash his teeth. How much we risk to bring in God's kingdom of love and justice and peace and charity and truth and humility and compassion, all that, how much we risk for that will make the difference for us between entering into joy or outer darkness. We at St. John's have been entrusted by our Lord with an awesome responsibility. You just have to walk around this place to, to be impressed with the awesomeness of that responsibility. And we have a choice to make. We can be caretakers with a goal of passing St. John's on intact. That kind of stewardship is what the third servant did. And I think we know that that plan over time will lead to darkness. Or we can know that taking risks is not risky at all. We incur no risk by taking risks compared to the alternative. That is what the first two servants knew who entered into joy. There is risk in loving. There is risk in reaching out. There is risk in growing. The gospel of our Lord is mainly about letting go. It's about trusting in God, knowing that God loves us. It's about having faith. It's about getting out of the boat. It's about forgiving freely. It's about not being afraid. 
It is about risking greatly. That is what the parable of the talents teaches. As he has loved us, so we are to love greatly. And then on that day of judgment that is coming, the master will say to us, well done, good and trustworthy servants, enter into the joy. God be praised. Love your neighbor. Amen. Please stand and we will say together on page 326. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Page 388, Prayers of the People, page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. I ask for your special prayers and petitions and thanksgivings and intercessions. Today, we know how much there is to pray for and pray about. Please pray now silently or aloud as the Spirit moves us. Amen. Please kneel as you are able, and we will say together at the bottom of page 331. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, Kathy. Peace, Nika. Peace, Elizabeth. Thank you, John. Peace, Sherry. Hi, I'm Chris. Nice to see you. Hi, I'm Chris. Hmm? Hi, yeah. I'm Chris. I'm Chris. Glad to see you. Oh. You are? Trish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Did you bring these people? Yes, these are like What kind? The girl. Girl? Oh. Peace, Nam. Good for you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Peace. Peace, Liz. Peace. Likewise. Peace to you. Good morning. I'm Chris. I'm Hayden. Thank you for being here. Peace, John. Peace, Leslie. Peace, Nancy. Peace, Dave. Please be seated. Oh, I forgot to say peace to you.
Uh, Trish, would you please uh, inter introduce who you, c please. Well, thank you. Um, let's give a welcome. Thank you. And it's a girl. Good. How do you all know Trish? Oh, uh, nice. Oh, I've been to, okay, I know exactly where you live. Great. Hmm? Oh, yes, uh, please stand and introduce yourself. Um, you're not going to just be able to get away with that. <clears throat> and Richard? Gear? Thank you. For, where do you come from? Oh. Wow. Very glad to have you. Last, um, I have to tell you, St. John's is a pathfinding parish. It's just people follow what St. John's does. Well, how can I say that? Last week, I was walking past St. Thomas Fifth Avenue which is a kind of lesser parish in New York. And um, when I was there 50 years ago, coffee hour used to be, you go through the church, sort of like walk through the church and go up some stairs and there's a room and all festooned with finery and that's where the coffee hour was. It was magnificent big silver tea service and whatnot. Um, not anymore. Guess where they have their coffee hour now? At St. Thomas Fifth Avenue. In the narthex, right? Right? I think they, uh, they copied us in that respect. <laughs> Instead of having the coffee hour someplace, you know, have it in the narthex. I love that. Anyone else? Anything to say? Anyone? Yes, Dave. I do hope we're going to see the gears again. Hayden and Richard, what do you think? Let's, let's pray for that. Our him, what? Yeah, really, <laughs> exactly. Our hymn at the offertory is hymn 680.
We are on page 340 in the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose true promise the Holy Ghost came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to thy church the power to serve thee as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to make our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial of his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these thy gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee. Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Of Christ, the, cup was the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus the Christ, Christ, which was given for thee. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. 
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Would you help me with that, please? Thank you. Thank you. Let us say together, please, on page 339. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day, this week, and forevermore. Our closing hymn is hymn 397. <clears throat> 